party where there was alcohol. And I was surprised because mm-hmm. I came from Cigna. Cigna's very corporate and conservative, no alcohol at the establishment. And he taught me entrepreneurship. And I didn't mm-hmm. even heard of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. So I learned how he viewed his department within the Deloitte framework. So we went from supporting 16,000 American users to supporting 130,000 worldwide. Mm. In three years, my team was in Hyderabad, India. Mm. So I I definitely learned that you could do more than you thought possible. He just expanded my possibilities. He was in the PhD program and wrote a book at the same time. Wow. Exactly, exactly. It was wild. So I said to myself, um, Nicole, what are you doing? Mm. How, how are you contributing to the community? How are you giving back? What are you doing with all this IT knowledge? So I decided to start a business mm-hmm. and, and connect business owners to each other through a website called Diverse Philly. So I did that for the first three years. and not, Maybe not even three years, maybe two years because we had a recession. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know that you could stop being an entrepreneur. I was so new. I was brand new to the, to the industry, so I kept going. Mm-hmm. I kept going, suffered through it, and was fortunate for the Urban League to come in my life. The Urban League had been servicing um, the minority community in Philadelphia for 100 years. And they said, okay, we keep getting uh, job opportunities, but the state of African Americans in Philadelphia hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So let's go down the entrepreneurship path. And I was hired as one of that first consultants. Oh, wow. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that came from social media. There we go. <laughs> that there came from go. LinkedIn. Well, that yeah. digital footprint. That it, it was a, a great way for me to leverage what's going on for mm-hmm. 3,000 people. I, I can't call everybody and say, what are you doing today? Mm-hmm. So social media definitely allowed me to see what was going on quickly, 15 minutes, just perusing and making sure you stay connected. I was looking at some of your following follower numbers. Yeah, you're definitely staying connected. I see you. I see you. Nicole, Nicole is dropping in on six thousand and ten thousand followers on some of these sites. So, but that um, that's because I I use it to start a conversation. Sure. That is my lead generation system. So I'm on social media in the top of the morning, and and people come to expect it. I do a status update every day between wow. 6 and 8 a.m. I like to get my status update out there. So would that be the status update when I, when I, I see the picture of, of what you're doing uh, during your cycling classes? And yes, things? And yes. Yeah, yeah, that would be the one? Okay, that okay, okay. The okay. One. Because during, this, during the entrepreneurship journey, I realized I had to fix... I had to grow spiritually, I had to grow mentally, and I had to grow physically. You know, I was 70 that's, pounds. That's a great, wow. you know what, oh my gosh. That's a great point because we had, uh, wow, that's kind of been a theme right? through this Women's History Month thing because when Wendy Weiner was on, yeah. she spoke about uh, you know, some of the challenges and the things that she's doing mm-hmm. to allow her to, to be 100% into her career, mm-hmm. but it involved her losing weight and things of that nature. And Being then healthy. we had Jody Brockington on, and Jody is a lifestyle and fitness coach, and a, a big piece of her discussion is, you know, with her 28-day FOJ challenge, mm-hmm. is getting healthy to be your best.